Welcome back. So when we last left off, I was still having to do a bit of work there on these little transitions that go from the square tube to where the stick that you actually hold on to is. So what I had to do is uh, increase the inner diameter of these parts there. So one would hold the stick and the other one would hold the square tube. So I started out with a drill bit on each of them and then I switched over to the boring bar here. So I could just very carefully take it out. And you see I've got that thing running automatically right now. Just um, pulling the last sort of pass, uh, pass out of there to take it to the right inner, di uh, inner diameter and this is just a sample of the square tube there just so you, you can see now it sort of slides in there nice and snug and eventually I'll drill the holes through there and you'll be, be able to bolt that onto the end there and then this is the top part the one that goes um, that accepts the actual stick itself so that had to be taken out on the inner diameter as well and then ultimately a hole drilled on the side there to have the retaining screw that holds the stick in place so it doesn't just slide out uh, when you pull on it. So I had to drill that, those holes in uh, both of those. And when Justin and Elliot were here, one of the things they asked me to do was upsize these um, push rods that go out to the aileron. So they were 5 sixteenths and that was per mark spec. And um, Justin just wanted a little bit more safety margin on those. So I've increased the diameter there to 3 eighths. And you know, I had to do those up at Brits, drill them and tap them and then I've, you know, just quickly painted them and put the rod ends in there so that's another job done and they also suggested that I put some stops in there to stop the ailerons um, from going beyond the limits up and down so and this is just kind of a retrofit trying to figure out the best way to do it but I've got a block there and a block there and so each one basically stops the aileron at its limit for up and down as you'll see in a little bit and ultimately uh, if you look over here, that one that I just showed you will hit on the underside edge here when it when the aileron goes in the up deflection and the other one that's sort of in the spar there um, will hit on the leading edge there and they, you know, I've set them, you know, purposely so they have the right um, um, travel in there. So there's the new um, push rod in place there and time to put this uh, aileron back on and check that it's all working with respect to hitting the limits so this is what it looks like now you see a push push it all the way up and because of the way the geometry works um, that e bottom edge there actually slides past that block and then it you know locks into place against there so that's the only thing that's hitting against that block now it doesn't hit on the edges or anything like that and then uh, on the other um, in the other direction in the down elevator you can see there's that block in there and so when it comes all the way down when it gets to the you know certain point there that leading edge hits there and that leading edge has a steel bar in it so that's plenty strong enough to stop that so and th these limits will match what the uh, stick travel is as well once that's all put back together and just checking the angles there so this was mainly for my reference to make sure that both of them end up being the same so it's 35 and a half degrees down and I believe it was 17.2 um, yeah, degrees up so yeah, again just making sure that both of them match when I do the other side in terms of where the stops get uh, placed and so this is the other side and so I've already sort of drilled out one hole there and I've, I'm actually using rev nuts in there through the carbon to hold these in place so I, I drilled out the one hole put the rev nut in there put the block in and then use the block to drill the second hole and so there now I have to put the second rev nut in there and then once that's done there I can put in uh, put the block back in and this one actually needed an extra spacer in there a little bit th thicker than the other one for some unknown reason but anyway that should set it with about exactly the same angle as uh, what the other one had in the down uh, direction and then I moved on to doing the one for the stop for the up direction uh, basically you know the same type of process just you know drill out one hole put in the rev nut drill the other hole you know using that the actual stopper itself and then put in the other uh, the other rev nut so uh anyway yeah that one's pretty much done there although i didn't get any video of the finished product and then i was up at brett's and doing um some more work on these fr4 pieces because uh, i wanted to be able to bolt these together these this is the one that holds the bearing in place and then that is going to um, fasten to 
the little insert bracket that sort of goes between that and the bracket inside of the um, of the aircraft already so this needed to be tapped with 832 and the tap I was using was pretty dull so I picked up a new one because I got 12 holes to do in total through a half inch FR4 by hand so anyway that'll, I can do that now tomorrow and just to finish off uh, I just want to let you know I've got um, with respect to the side sticks I've ordered some more of the uh, 6061 uh, square tube with a with a eighth inch wall and I've ordered like four sticks of that so I have sort of a backup set and I've also ordered some, um, again, three quarter inch thick, but solid, um, solid 7075. I wasn't able to get any 7075 tube. Nobody has it anywhere. The only thing you could do is special order it, and then you had to order like 100 pounds of it, which is just kind of too much for what I need. So, and I understand if, you know, I'm having the solid um, square tube there that I can't run the wires through it, but what I was in intending on doing, because I've got the, the square tube here, and the transition running up like this to the stick and so uh, I can run the wire through that transition that you saw me working on before and I can actually have it pop out the bottom there and you know, this is just you know for the purposes of the prototype to have a safe solution that is you know serviceable so the wires will run out there and then they can run in um, back in under the dash or through the dash or whatever around the side of the dash there's plenty of extra wire on there so I just have a little service loop sort of hanging there and, and with a 90 degree uh, rotation in that and then it goes about three and a half inches in and out that little um, service loop will be fine it won't get caught on anything or anything like that so the 7075 being probably um, maybe twice as hard or maybe not quite as much as twice as hard as the 6061 and if I get um, both of those sets of material uh, hard anodized at the uh, shop that's over here then I've got sort of the best um, best case scenario for what I can do there, and I think um, you know with this the 7075 with the hard anodizing is absolutely going to be plenty hard enough for what uh, I need, and not you know have to get any sort of little indentations happening in that uh, side stick if it's overstressed. But I'll try it with the hard anodized 6061 first, and. Uh, see how that works and if for some reason that's just still too soft then I'll switch over to the 7075 so that's uh, ordered and that material should be here in the next few days and then I can take it down to the hard anodizer and get that job done so I still got a little bit more to do with respect to getting that sorted out and then um, Britt's been fairly busy with his other jobs and stuff so he hasn't done any of the welding that I need him to do yet um, but you know, there's not very much there to do. It's just like a, an afternoon's worth of work there for us to sit down and just sort of go through everything and make sure it's all um, aligned and everything correctly before he starts welding on that. And then finally, um, the latest news from Justin and Elliot is that they're going to be scheduled um, to come out here. Now it's July 27th, I believe, is the Monday. So a little bit later than what I was hoping. I was hoping to get them sort of in the middle of July, but now it's, it's closer to the end. But, you know, with everything going on, I mean, I'm just, it's the best that I can do. So, and I should have everything well and truly ready by then. And in fact, that'll give me time as well to put the aircraft up on the blocks again and just cycle the gear a bunch of times and make sure everything's working with that. And potentially if everything's, you know, if I'm really comfortable with how the gear's working that and... Justin's on the first flight and he's way up at 10,000 feet and he's happy with everything else going on. There's no issues with cooling or anything like that. Potentially he can retract the gear, um, you know, as another sort of step towards moving things along. Anyway, that's the update so far for this week. Um, tune in again. I'll probably have another video out Friday or Saturday just showing uh, what uh, other projects and stuff I've been working on or showing you know the stuff finishing off uh, with what's still to go on the stick and then you know if Brit has time to do some welding for me I'll show that, that. Uh, anyway we'll catch you on the next one thanks